When the English Civil War broke out in 1642, England was divided between the Royalist and often Catholic supporters of King Charles I and those who favoured a more powerful Parliament who were mainly Protestant. At this time, Basinghouse was owned by John Paulette, the fifth Marquess of Winchester. He lived up to his family motto, love loyalty and supported the King. The earliest visible features at Basinghouse today are the huge circular bank or ringwork and defensive ditches of a castle built in the 1100s by the Deport family, who arrived with William the Conqueror in the Norman invasion of 1066. It was on top of these castle remains that Sir William Paulette, the first Marquess of Winchester and Lord Treasurer of England, chose to build his new house in 1535. When first built, it was the largest private house in the country, with around 360 rooms, and in its heyday was frequently visited by the monarchs of the day, including Henry VIII, Elizabeth I, and Philip II of Spain, and Queen Mary I, who honeymooned there in 1554 after their marriage in nearby Winchester. The Normans, upon landing on English soil, were quick to construct wooden mott and bailey castles at strategic places. They constructed a castle close by the present Basing House at a place now known as Oliver's Battery. This castle is thought to have been part of William the Conqueror's campaign to march on London. It was this castle, along with many others in Hampshire, that passed into the hands of one of Hampshire's earliest families, the Norman de Port family. This family chose to live in the castle for only a short period before moving to their preferred position, that of the present Basing House ruins. Basing House, as we now know it, grew from the site of much earlier settlements. The Romans settled in the area and the name Basing sprang from the Anglo-Saxon leader Baza, who lived in the vicinity. We know this due to the ruins like the one I'm standing in today. Okay, so um, many things have been found at Basing House. Um, a lot of it is cannonballs and muskets, so some of them are about this big solid lead. Um, and from the cannon We've got a replica cannon and it can travel over a mile, so it was quite a distance that they could reach. Um, obviously other things um, that relate to the house, so decorative work, um, beautiful like carved stones and different things like that. Um, and also food remains, so what they used to eat. Um, we consider oysters today something that's a bit of a delicacy, but in those days it was food that people of not such a higher class would have eaten, so servants would have had oysters, for example. Um, we've been very lucky to find a lot of china that's intact. Um, there's also been more gruesome findings of, um, we, there was a human skull found in the 90s, and um, it was discovered that it had a big blade cut down the back of the skull, which means that he was decapitated during the siege, um, and he was then buried. Um, in the 90s, as a remark of respect, there's also an area which we call the orchard, which visitors can't go into because it is um, thought to be where about 800 people are buried. So it's one of those areas you don't want to kind of go into. Well, as I say, if Basing House survived um, in its original form it would have been a very big tourist attraction I think um, very much like Hampton Court um, but as it is it is ruins and I think people find it very hard to kind of establish what was actually there because yeah. when you look at it some people just see a pile of bricks and they don't actually see that there was gatehouses that were eight stories high and um, various things like that and I think trying to get from the archaeology to what is actually coherent for the visitor is quite a difficult concept um, but in terms of the English Civil War it was a very important place um, it's not mentioned very often um, which is a shame <laughs> but it is um, it was up there with one of the top sieges that they had um, you don't often get Oliver Cromwell coming to the sieges himself so it was kind of um, important in that respect also about 800 people died at Basing um, House during the sieges, so it was a substantial kind of fighting going on in the area, and also being where it was geographically was very important. It was near London and it was near the coast, so it had both elements that could have been very good for it.